Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of an incredible talk show brought to you by the Indian Football Portal. Today we have with us a coach who is a Japanese AFC Pro license with 25 years of coaching experience. He has coached in US, Qatar, Ghana, Nigeria, Cambodia, India, Sri Lanka and Thailand. He has coached Lone Star Kashmir FC in India in the I-League Second Division 2019-2020 season. Currently, he is coaching uh, Angtong FC in Thai League 3 Western Region in Thailand. Hello, Coach Kenichi. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. How are you? It's really good to meet you. We are doing really well. Thank you for giving us your time today. And I would like yeah. Ryan to take over now. It's a brilliant opportunity for all us coaches to have a conversation with someone of Coach Kenny's caliber, such a well-traveled coach. So it's great to have you. So let's just get into it then. Coach Kenny, shall we begin? Yeah. Great. Yes. So um, you're, a, you're quite a well-traveled uh, coach and you have been traveling since the early age of 17 when you moved to Brazil to make a playing career. So can you tell me how that happened and what your experience was like in Brazil? Um, in 1986 uh, is when uh, I went to Brazil. At that time, there was no professional league in Japan. So I had an opportunity to go to Brazil and uh, it was possible because of the, the current ex exchanging uh, rate uh, was so strong for Japanese yen. Uh, it was inexpensive to live in Brazil. I stayed there for two years and a half and uh, played for under 18 and under 20 uh, academy teams. Before I played one season with uh, uh, the first team uh, on the amateur contract, but uh, I couldn't sign the professional contract. So at uh, the age of 20, I gave up playing and uh, I decided to move to uh, somewhere else at that time. That's quite a journey and quite a risk you've taken to move across an entire, across so many continents to make that move. And um, according to the internet, your coaching career was uh, had begun in 1998 at the age of uh, 28 with youth teams in the US. So uh, you may want to correct that fact if it's uh, wrong, but what made you step into coaching? And secondly, what made you head to the US in particular? Well, when I gave up uh, um, playing uh, um, the professional career in Brazil, uh, I wanted to go back to school and uh, I was into art, uh, drawing, um, painting, photography, and so on. So I decided to go to uh, New York City um, to go to school. Then I studied uh, in university. Um, I started coaching, uh, I think it was 92. I think I was age of 21 or 22. Um, I was coaching uh, uh, young children such as eight and nine years old, uh, but it uh, quickly became my full-time job. Uh, within two or three years. Great. I mean, uh, you've made that step and that's, I think, uh, now you have 25 plus years of experience. And now what makes it even more special is that you have coached in the US, Qatar, Ghana, Nigeria, Cambodia, India, Sri Lanka and Thailand. That's quite a variety. So how have human and footballing cultures differed in each of these countries? And as a coach, what do you do to adapt to these cultures? Well, I think uh, um, each country is very unique and uh, uh, it has own culture, own history and, uh, you know, our uh, own way of uh, how the society works or it doesn't. Um, I have to quickly find out uh, what works in that country, what works in that culture. Uh, but on the uh, football pitch, it's uh, always the same. You know, um, you have to work hard. You have to be organized and you have to be flexible and, uh, you know, you have to analyze each day what we are doing, what our opponents are doing and try to improve uh, through the hard work. There's no shortcut. So on a football pitch, it's quite simple. Um, off the pitch, um, we really have to find out how the society and how the club itself um, is organized and uh, uh, it went uh, day to day. Um, some country is very um, strong in hierarchy. Some countries are more flat in the relationship uh, within the uh, working environment. Some country very straightforward and some country are very uh, indirect. So I think within one week or two weeks, I have to figure out how to walk off the pitch. 
and has language uh, ever been a barrier has it been a challenge for you working at different countries and if so how do you manage to get your points across to those players well i think the the two country or well, three countries that um they don't speak english uh, that i worked in is uh kyrgyzstan um thailand country i'm working here and uh mongolia which i worked just before i came to uh thailand in Kyrgyzstan, they speak Russian as the official language, but their native language is Kyrgyz. So by nature, they are already bilingual. And I worked with uh, under 16 players. They are very young. So after I uh, started working with them uh, about one month, uh, they are talking to me in Russian. We had an interpreter, of course. But uh, without um, interpreter, I understood they are Russian and I responded in English and they understood the, uh, my English. Even though I couldn't speak Russian, I understood and they couldn't speak English, but uh, they understood. Also on the pitch, uh, I use a lot of uh, body languages and uh, also I detect their, um, what's called the, uh, not body language, but um, non-verbal uh, cues, non-verbal communication. I think that is more important than the verbal communication. This is some some great learning for all the coaches who are watching, um, you know, in terms of how to make a success in an unfamiliar environment. Now, talking about success, as head coach of Hearts of Oak in Ghana, you have achieved tremendous success by maintaining first or second place on the table throughout the first round of the Ghana Premier League season. So what, in your view, were the factors that contributed to this success? There are several um, factors. The first of all, I think the, um, the quality of the players we had was uh, outstanding. And uh, what our opponents were not good at, um, we were very good at, meaning that we have trained uh, those areas and uh, we stood out in these areas. Um, also, we were lucky. We had a luck on our side. And uh, um, most of all, um, the club was struggling, uh, was in danger of uh, relegation a season uh, before I arrived, and it's a big club. They were um, 2000 uh, CAF Champion League um, winner with uh, 100 years of uh, uh, history, but they were in danger of relegation. They haven't been successful uh, for several years before I came. And we started um, winning as soon as the league started, and uh, fans came back. Um, our home stadium was 4000 um, capacity stadium. And uh, almost all the home matches were near to the sold out. All the away matches, even away matches are um, sold out. Um, there's no uh, available seats on away matches. So I think the not only the club, but the league was revived. You know, so these are um, like coincidentally uh, happened as a, a part of luck. Well, um, you know, humble of you to explain it that way. And uh, now we're going to talk about your stint in Nigeria, which is going to be very interesting for a lot of viewers. You coached a club called, if my pronunciation is correct, Ifyan Yuba in Nigeria. You coached for five weeks and managed their preseason. And then you decided to step away to get away from the place in for the safety of your life. So what were the dangers that prompted you to take such a step? Um, as far as if any are concerned, I can't uh, comment on it. I prefer not to. Okay, no worries, no worries. Fair enough. Um, now for the for the main question, main for the Indian football audience, you were the head coach of Lone Star Kashmir FC in the I League Second Division from two zero one nine to two zero two 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 zero two zero. So, can you please share your entire experience as a foreign coach of working in Indian football with Indian players? in the Indian culture and your entire journey with Lone Star in detail? Before I talk about my experience, uh, I think there are uh, two uh, pretexts to it. The first of all, Long Kashmir is in uh, I-League 2, which is a third tier 
in um, India, um, India Super League considered as a first tier, and uh, uh, I League One, uh, I League Two. So each time that the tier goes up or goes down, there are difference of the standards. Uh, so that's uh, the first factor. And the second factor is that, um, yes, it is in India, but it is in Kashmir. And it's not really India, India. I mean, India is a big country, huge uh, in geography. But Kashmir itself is a very remote place. And uh, we were in a very unique situation where we are isolated. Uh, no internet, uh, no communication whatsoever from uh, outside the world. And it was in, in, in war zone uh, at that time. I don't know how it is now. Um, the third factor is that long Kashmir doesn't exist right now. They disbanded. That that tells a lot about the how um, lack of organization they had. Um, I, I only coach one match, by the way. And there are only three training sessions before the first match. Um, I think it was two. Yeah, two foreigners arrived uh, two nights before the first league match. And I was asked to start those two foreign players. They are from Cameroon. <laughs> I refused it because of the safety of the players and the, as well as they won't perform well. So they're not going to contribute to win the match. But that caused uh, a lot of uh, conflicts, and uh, you know, I was there for only one match. Right. But, um, I know a little bit about more about the uh, football in India. Um, at the first year, you know, and also uh, top clubs in I League One, it's a lot more uh, well organized, and uh, there are big opportunity for football in India to develop. But I think it starts from the grassroots and. Uh, has to focus on the youth development, um, connecting to uh, a professional level. That's my uh, honest opinion. Yeah, this is some some good uh, inputs, and it's clear that your success in so many countries also to do with how you have understood the culture of how where Kashmir is in terms of the political situation. So it's really good to see. Now talking about um, you know talking about a belief that many people have, many armchair people have, which is that. When we think about foreign coaches, we are thinking European coaches, South American coaches. So has you being an Asian coach ever made it difficult for you to be considered for jobs or to, you know, gain the respect and recognition that a European or South American coach would get? Yes, definitely. Uh, I have that, the um, challenges. Um, my first professional club was the Hearts of Oak. And uh, uh, the reason why I was given the job was... A lot of coincidence happened simultaneously at the last minute. Uh, they had this European coach that they wanted to hire, and he declined at the last minute. So I was the only candidate left at that point, and uh, they gave it to me because we have to start the training camp. And uh, uh, they weren't thinking about I will be successful, but uh, I became successful, so I stayed for half season. Uh, definitely in many countries uh, in Africa and in Asia, they prefer European or South American coaches because that traditional way of football is um, more success and it is it is still successful um, at higher standard in Europe, especially and the South America. Um, but there are also um, individual differences of uh, ability to the coach. Just because somebody is from Spain, it doesn't necessarily mean that he is a good coach. Yes, there are many good. Spanish coaches, um, coaches from Spain, um, the higher standard, but there are also uh, a few uh, coaches from Spain that I've met personally that are, you know, I think uh, have a, a higher standard. Um, it doesn't matter really, uh, it's a matter of uh, what you can or cannot do, but before many Asian coaches are given a chance, um, I think they look at the names, which country they are from, oh, it's from Germany, it's from Brazil, Okay, so they must be good. They must be better than the Asian coaches. So that's the challenge that we have as Asian coach. So uh, Japan is still, you know, one of the best, if not the best uh, Asian country for football. Now, if this is the case, what future do Indian coaches have then of ever going abroad and coaching? In India has many challenges. One of the biggest challenges is that uh, it's huge in terms of uh, geography, culture, and uh, 
it is a country, but uh, how diverse the, the country is, it is very, very challenging to organize, um, streamline or unified approach. So I think the organization of the, the football itself, um, in fact, they, I don't know how it is now, but the uh, ISL and I-League are not really, uh, you know, one entity is what I'm uh, understood. Is it uh, already united or still separate? It's separate. Yeah, so that, that has to be fixed. And there are many local leagues that does not take any part of the, um, you know, football uh, umbrella. They, they are very independent. Um, it's very chaotic um, as far as, you know, uh, where players go and uh, where the teams or clubs start and move up to. It's not uh, one step uh, after next. Uh, there are just many independent leagues and matches and uh, games um, uh, organized or not well sorted out. So that's the first thing that they have to uh, fix. And if they are able to organize better, I think it is easier to develop players, develop teams, clubs. Um, coaches need to step up. Uh, they can go um, one or two years uh, in South America or uh, Europe, or let's say you know uh, some of the uh, more advanced uh, Asian countries such as Japan and uh, uh, Qatar and South Korea and uh, Australia, and you know trying to have uh, experience and um, come back with that knowledge in the coach more modern way. Um, I think that's the, uh, what we have to do. I think the national team uh, has done well, you know, but national team is a representation of what's happening domestically. So for domestic clubs to be better, um, the youth system has to be better, you know, so it all comes down to grassroots, youth coaches, youth football, um, league organization and so on. So what is your advice then for coaches that wish to follow a similar path as you by, you know, coaching in so many different countries and continents and being successful? I didn't plan this way. <laughs> it happened. It happened really. Um, but I think um, there are several things I can advise to any coaches. Uh, first of all, you know, um, you got to like what you're doing. You have to be like... Uh, you are coaching, you know, um, you have to feel you belong on the pitch and working with the players. That's the first thing uh, you have to do and constantly uh, trying to improve yourself. Football advances every day, every year. So what I did uh, when I was in India is not was not the uh, same as what I did in Sri Lanka. And what I did in Sri Lanka is not the same. Uh, as what I did in Mongolia, or what I did uh, to Mongolia is not the same what I'm doing now. You know, uh, each year, each day, I try to learn something and uh, try to do something new, you know, and not to afraid of making mistakes. Just like a player, you know, coaches has to make a mistake to do something new and uh, learn from the mistakes and uh, try to improve it. You know, and uh, I think you just have to do your best um, all the time. Um, it means that you have to prepare yourself. You have to um, prepare uh, yourself mentally and physically to be the best you can be every time you are on the pitch, whether it's a training session or, or the match. Players feel the energy from the coach. And if the coach does not have uh, uh, the best energy, either physically or mentally, on the pitch that day, they will feel it and they will give you the best. So I think the, it's all about ref reflection of yourself, um, how to prepare and be on the pitch. Players will feel it and they will give you the best or less than best. It's all up to the coaches, I think. Some golden words there, some real, real top suggestions. And uh, this, was a, this was a wonderful interview. I won't take too long now. Last question before, you know, before we finish. Uh, what were your thoughts on Japan's performance in this uh, FIFA World Cup? I think it's a mix of um, good surprise and uh, disappointment. Uh, first of all, uh, current generation of Japanese national team or potential Japanese national team players are far better than how it was in the past. There are a lot of young 
outstanding players playing for the uh, the European top clubs. So um, it is a very, very good opportunity to succeed, but they were in the very, very difficult group, um, teamed up, I mean, grouped up with uh, Spain and Germany. So difficulty was uh, expected. Um, what fortunate was, I think it was big, big factor that Germany was not so much focused on football itself this time. And uh, tactical change they made um, as the improvisation uh, was really effective. I don't know if it's a planned or it happened, you know, as a part of improvisation. I have no idea, but how they changed the system and how they adapted in second half worked very well. Um, but they were not prepared enough to play against Costa Rica. And uh, that is the, something that they have to improve. Against Spain, I think they did fantastic. But again, uh, when the critical moment uh, came at round of 16, and uh, it's all about mental strength to put that spot kicks uh, into the goal, you know, um, I think the lack of uh, um, experience, I mean, lack of the successful experience and the big stage, such as the round of 16 in the World Cup final tournament, was a big factor. You can't really practice uh, taking the penalty uh, shootout, you know, in round of 16 against uh, uh, teams like, you know, um, the uh, Croatia, uh, which is very strong side uh, in, in football. So I think there are some good surprises against Spain, against Germany. But against Costa Rica, against uh, uh, Croatia, I think uh, it was disappointing. Well, uh, again, some good analysis. But regardless, I'm sure all Asian countries will be envious or rather, you know, will will look up to Japan's way of doing things because your, your country has remarkably, you know, taken football by storm. Uh, that brings us to the end of the interview. And, uh, you know, on this new year, we are delighted that we have started off with with having you first show of 2023 and we hope to have you again very very soon and that's it from me um Arches is going to uh, is going to close it for you for us thank you uh thank you coach kenny for your valuable time uh me being a coach i personally like what you told about a uh, coach's energy being reflected uh, upon his players so that was something that really stuck with me. And I'm sure uh, our viewers will definitely gain uh, some more insight from this interview. Thank you for your time. Have a good day and a happy new year. Thank you. Pleasure uh, being here. Happy new year.